Life might not be a walk in the park, but for some people, it is a walk in the garden, literally. There's a village in Denmark that looks like a carefully curated garden when seen from above. This circular community was built in 1964 on the outskirts of Copenhagen. There are 24 circles made up of a dozen homes each and 284 garden plots. This unusual design might look futuristic, but it was actually inspired by a traditional pattern of Danish villages from centuries ago. The middle of the village, commonly a well, would be the main point for mingling, hanging out, and making that community spirit grow as strong as it can be. Looks like this pizza-shaped planning must cause huge clog-ups when everyone leaves for work in the morning and comes back in the evening. But not really, since the houses are used as weekend getaway spots. It's a big thing in Denmark, as most people living in the city like to have a cabin in the countryside. Only people who permanently reside nearby can buy a house in Garden City. They can visit the cabins from April to October or during the weekends. The nearby gardens are available for rent at an affordable monthly rate. If you're inspired by futuristic designs, you're definitely going to love Smart Forest City in Mexico. It's still in the project stages and is being designed by the same Italian architect who built the vertical forest in his hometown of Milan. It's two huge towers with 700 trees, 11,000 plants, and 5,000 shrubs growing right out of the concrete. The Mexican project will be a botanical garden within a modern city near Cancun, inspired by Mayan heritage and honoring their special relationship and respect for nature. It's going to house 130,000 people in homes covered by plants. It will be a research center, so the residents will be mostly students and scientists who are going to take a record of their unique living experiences. It could transform the cities as we know them into something new. Forest City will be completely self-sufficient. It'll have its own food, energy from solar panels, electric and semi-automatic transportation systems, and water turned from sea salty into drinkable. <laughs> Talk about the city of the future. The Orbit is the name of another project that is going to transform a rural town in Canada into the city of the future. It will be home to the next generation community. These lucky guys are promised to enjoy the best of both worlds, a rural lifestyle with the cutting edge technology of the future. The Orbit will be packed with fiber optics, drone ports, self-driving vehicles, and large rooftops with foliage to release plenty of oxygen. The streets will be a mix of circles and squares going from the central hub. Reminds me of that Danish garden city. Don't feel like waiting for cities and villages of the future to be finished? Yeah, I hear ya. Well, may I interest you in an already existing town encrusted with diamonds instead? You won't see them without a microscope, but they're still there in Nördlingen, Germany. When the first residents came here somewhere around the 9th century CE, they were sure they were settling down in a volcanic crater. They didn't know the stone they were using for construction was embedded with millions of tiny diamonds, and the origins of the crater were out of this world. An asteroid slightly larger than half a mile in diameter hit our planet around 14.5 million years ago in what is now Bavaria and left a crater 16 miles wide. The bedrock was under such intense heat and pressure that the bubbles of carbon inside transformed into tiny diamonds at a concentration like nowhere else in the world. The secret was only uncovered in the 1960s when two geologists from the USA studied the landscape from a distance and noticed it didn't look exactly like a volcanic crater. The Popeye Village in Malta might not have any residents, but it's far from being quiet when the visitors arrive. The whole village was once a movie set for the 1980 comic strip screen version of the story of Popeye. Yeah, that sailor who loved spinach a lot. It was the first lead role for Robin Williams, by the way. To build the movie set, they brought tree trunk logs from the Netherlands and some wooden shingles from Canada and built over 20 realistically looking constructions. There's a nautical school, a bakery, a post office, the mayor's office, and Popeye Comic Museum. The movie became a huge hit 
and the locals decided not to part with it. Instead of disassembling it, they turned the set into a theme park. You can have some family fun here, and the color of the water in the bay is out of this world. If you feel like saving some money for your new home, you might consider investing in real estate in the Spanish town of Centennial de las Bodegas. You won't need to pay for building some of the walls and the ceilings. 3,000 locals live under and directly into the sides of Cadiz Mountains. The place has a history of at least 2,000 years. The cliffs have protected many generations living here from unwanted guests. Plus, the rocks keep the houses cool in the summer and warm in the winter. That's right, you can also save on air conditioning. The sense of community is strong as ever in our next destination. Santa Cruz del Isolte in Colombia is one of the world's most crowded islands. With around 900 to 1,200 residents living in the territory about the size of two soccer fields, fishermen built this island on a coral platform over a century ago. They chose it because of its beautiful location and the absence of mosquitoes. I can completely relate to that. The families of the original settlers were growing, and most of them never left the island. All the residents are natives, and they all have one of six different last names. When the family needs extra space, they just add an extra floor to one of around 100 homes in town. Now it has a school, shops, a church, and one restaurant. There is no traffic since the streets aren't wide enough for cars or trucks, and the distances are perfectly walkable. And there's no need to lock the doors when you leave. Everyone knows each other, so the crime rate equals zero. Ever wondered what it's like to live inside a beehive? Well, you can experience something close, at least in terms of shape, if you stay in the Italian town of Albero Bello. These houses, called Trulli, have their history. In the 17th century, the king of Naples sent tax collectors to the area. The local lord had a smart idea to build a settlement of houses that could be easily assembled and disassembled to avoid paying the settlement tax. Even when the town became free from their overseer, they kept the original style of their houses with dry stone walls and conical roofs. Game of Thrones fans, this one's for you. You can find the real-life village that served as the backdrop for the yellow city in your favorite saga in Morocco. And it's much more than just a movie set. The village is a UNESCO heritage site and a typical example of a pre-Saharan habitat. Earthen buildings are safely protected by high walls. Some of the houses look pretty modest. Others are more like urban castles. The village used to be one of the key stops on the ancient Sahara trade route. Traders would take a nice break from traveling here on their way to Timbuktu or the Western Sahara. It looks like it's thousands of years old, but in reality, the oldest constructions here were built no earlier than the 17th century. But even that is pretty impressive. The builders of the earthen village have adapted it perfectly to climactic conditions. The larger houses are regularly maintained, and the materials used are still the same, earth and wood.